Hello, my name is Sam Felton and welcome to Expert Interviews on Smash the Fat. With me today is Professor of Public Health at Auckland um, University of Technology down in New Zealand, Professor Grant Schofield. How you doing, Professor Grant? Good, Sam. Yourself? Yeah, all good in the hoods. All good in the hoods. Um, pleasure to have you here. Um, now, I first came across you um, from a um, from an article in the New Zealand Herald on their website about um, well, the the title of the article was "Time to Nurture Brain and Body." Um, and the journalist, I think, was interviewing you on how to be healthy in the workplace. And I thought that was a just brilliant interview in terms of all the all the little things that you were saying, um, in yeah. terms of bringing a, a complete holistic approach. And then I looked a little more into you, watched your TED talk um, about um, how to change Christchurch into into a, a more healthy city, um, and and everything like that, along with your um, your blog, uh, The Science um, of Human Potential, was that right, the name? Yep. Yep. Yeah, uh, and then uh, your, your, your book as well, Buck Up, it looks great. Yep. Buck Up, the real, real bloke's guide to getting healthy and living longer, absolutely fantastic. Um, so just to start off, um, how can we be healthy in the modern workplace with vending machines and you know we're geared towards sitting down and typing at the computer all day. Oh, well, I, I sort of started on this field with not so much thinking about the vending machines and the sitting down and all that sort of stuff but starting with the brain and going well you know, how does this how does this whole thing work and then once you start to get into the neuroscience of it I think the whole mm. thing falls into place. So it, you know, it's a distributed neural network. Uh, right. it's, a, it's a complex organ. It's a, you know, what, what have we got? 86 billion neurons just in, in your brain, another 14 billion around the body. Um, and each neuron just doesn't connect to one other neuron. It could be up to 7,000 other neurons. So when, once you start to do the maths, you go, man, that's a complicated system. Uh, mm -hmm. But then you start to think about something which I think is important, which is that uh, because the hardware and the software are the same thing in the nervous system, then mm -hmm. it actually has to physically change itself for, for you to think of anything sensible at all. Uh, well, right. even not sensible. Uh, but, but in order to create and solve problems, which you know, is, is the modern workplace, uh, to remember stuff, uh, then you need to provide the physiology that supports that, um, that wonderful word, word neuroplasticity. So that's what I've sort of got into is starting to think about the conditions that support human neuroplasticity. In other words, changing your brain to be productive, um, and, and it's a little bit beyond pro productivity as well because it's 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 health and enjoyment of life is on top of that. And so once you start to get into that, then I've mm -hmm. I, I, I would, I, I've got five what I'd call five brain rules. My brain rules, great. Um, yeah, the sort of rules for peak performance if you start to think about it. And, and you know, the first is um, is move it. Um, and I've got a, the acronym I've invented there is called uh, GOYA, G-O-Y-A, which, of course, stands get off your ass. Yeah, and, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the, the, yeah, the, the physiology is pretty simple, Sam. Yeah. You, you physically move. Um, and you generate a cascade of, of growth factors, um, and, and the mm -hmm. main one is really this brain-derived neurotrophic growth factor, and, right. and that's, that's the physiology of, of, of that rewiring of the brain, and mm -hmm. that happens when you move, um, and it happens, right. I, I think, well, in fact, there's two levels, and I think, uh, and I've really moved my, my thinking on this in the last couple of years, but it's mm. a lot of that very easy movement. Uh, you know, not sitting. So with my office environment, we've um, put the coffee tables on the desks, mm -hmm. and um, you can you can stand. And yeah, move around as yeah, it makes it simple. Yeah, it just makes it simple. Um, I'm not convinced of the evidence actually for for that mid range cardio work for making you smarter. Um, yeah, it, it, you, you glycate your tissues, you oxidize, uh, cause oxidative stress. 
Right. But a bit, a bit of that really high intensity stuff where you really give it to yeah. yourself. Like, you know what I'm talking about, the short hit intervals. Yeah, yeah, you get yeah a Really big release of that growth factor and mm-hmm. uh, support. So I've sort of really moved away from the, um, I guess what Mark Sisson would call the chronic cardio. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, just push it out to either end. And, and I think that's the best place to be for office workers. Yeah, absolutely. So sort of, you know, for busy office work is definitely doing that high intensity interval training would be um, beneficial cardiovascularly as well as um, for their brain. Yeah, well, the brain's well. Like, Yeah, yeah, the, the, heart's, the heart's there. But remember, your heart just supports the most important organ. That's the brain. Yeah, um, yeah, of course. Yeah, you got right. Um, yeah. And in terms of um, the low intensity stuff as well, um, what are your yeah. thoughts on, on walking and, and things like that, particularly in nature as well? Yeah, well, that's the other thing is if you could, if you could, you know, you think about the human involved evolved environment. It's an unstable mm-hmm. outdoor environment and more or less constant motion. Um, if you wanted to invent the thing most opposite to that, you would most likely, I think, invent a modern office. So, yeah, so I, I live in Canary Wharf, so I live in yeah. the complete antithesis of New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, so if, well, and this, and this is the, I do a lot of business and workplace work, mm-hmm. and I mean, as we cross all of these brain rules, you'll see that what science knows and what business does can often be completely the opposite thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which I guess, yeah. Uh, and the second brain rule will be no, uh, no news to you, which is feed it. Um, and I'm a strong mm. advocate of becoming fat adapted, uh, reducing the, <laughs> the dietary carbohydrates, and you know letting the brain yeah. run properly without those the peaks and troughs mm. of uh, glucose dependence and that extra. Yeah. You know, and, and when you look at the brain, you start to think, well, okay, if I run it on ketones. And uh, mm. so restricting dietary carbohydrate and having a high fat diet, then I provide more ATP per molecule. I get more cardiovascular uh, and cerebrovascular blood flow, uh, and people yeah. perform better on cognitive tests. It's a you know literally it's a no brainer. Wow. But yeah, we've, gone, <laughs> yeah, we've, we've gone for the opposite point of view. So I really all the executives I work with, yeah. I really strongly encourage them to. Uh, you know, the most often are interested in losing weight and getting in shape. You know, they've got um, mm-hmm. an age and developed yeah. boobs, that sort of thing. But actually what mm-hmm. sustains them on these higher fat, lower carbohydrate diets is is the energy and mental acuity that they have yeah. throughout their day. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that's one thing that um, a lot of my clients find is that they, they, they say that I've got more energy but I'm probably eating around about the same amount of food or maybe even a little bit less, but they've got more energy. It's because they're releasing that energy and they're getting their body back into biochemical balance and everything like that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's really fantastic to hear, and it's sort of, you know, the way that the body is meant to run, really. Yeah, well, um, I, 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 I couldn't agree more, and I think that's one thing that's worth pointing out to the public is people go, oh, no, well, that's that's not normal, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm saying that the, the human brain running 100% on glucose is a very recent phenomenon, but most of yeah. human history is run on ketones, uh, and that's what it yeah. does best. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, and sort of this idea that, you know, the, the body, um, the body's preferred fuel is glucose is... Yeah, it's a bit crazy, really, <laughs> when you yeah. start to think about it. Um, I mean, it's, it's certainly it will use the glucose first, um, yeah. but you know that's what stops you from using fat for for energy and everything else in the body as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, going back to your rules. Um, okay. So we, we've the got m- move it, feed it. Yep. And then um, number three. Well, I'm calling it brain rule three is defend it, but it's really all about sleep. Um, right. Again, what science knows and business does. Is, I, I think really the extraordinary discovery in neuroscience over the last ten years is that mm. uh, you know the, you might think that the body and the brain are just in a rest phase overnight, but there's when you start to look at brain waves and, and the cycles throughout the night, mm. then you know I, I think most people probably know we cycle between this deep sleep. Um, mm. 
and, and this more active uh, dream sleep. Uh, yeah. And when when we deprive people of the the deep sleep, and uh, th then they have a lot of trouble making new memories because there's a, a this is the most active part of the the day for um, synaptic rewiring. So there's literally hundreds of millions of new connections being formed and hundreds of millions paired off. Um, and it, you know people think well, oh. Uh, <laughs> You can you can you can easily artificially deprive yourself of that sleep while still thinking you're sleeping. For example, if you yeah. um, if you, you know, have too many um, beers before you go to sleep and go to bed mm -hmm. drunk, then you don't get there. Sleeping tablet does the same thing. If you're a snorer or near snorers or have disturbed sleep, then you never get into that deep sleep and you never get that that synaptic rewiring which we need. Yeah. And the same is true of the um, something. Something else is true of the dream sleep, and I'm not sure we know exactly why or how it happens. But when people are deprived of this dream sleep, then they have a great deal of difficulty in solving ambiguous problems. And yeah, you know, that's a bummer because that's what most of most of the modern workforce's job is. Mm. And um, you know, I think. Over the last couple of decades, in most countries, though, um, New Zealand's no exception. I'm sure, the UK is the same. Yeah. Is that we've seen this gradual eating away of our sleep um, mm -hmm. through screen time and and yeah. other things. And, and you know, it's, just... yeah, and it's sort of getting worse and worse a little bit with um, with mobile device, devices uh, such as yeah. phones and tablets as well, because people will. Uh, be watching something on the telly, and then yeah. they'll take it to the bedroom, watching it on like an iPad or something like that. Yeah. Well, one of the main predictors of a poor night's sleep is exposure to bright, flickering light just before you go to bed. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what do most yeah. of the world, do, most of the modern world, do? Well, they watch telly just before they go to bed, right? <laughs> exactly. So, uh, you know, I think that's that's an important one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, what, what what would you recommend for for people to get good sleep? Well, um, uh, there's there's three or four things. I mean, uh, I mean, obviously the pharmaceuticals and the drinking aren't going to work, which I guess is good. Um, mm. The other ones are obvious to start with: uh, are getting into a routine, um, mm. avoiding bright bright flickering light, televisions, and so forth. Um, those mm. bedside luminous and alarm clocks are associated with a poor night's sleep. Um, you know, right. my advice is just to smash it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, main, the other main thing, which I think probably most people intuitively know, is that, uh, that you know, the physiology for driving melatonin, the sleep hormone, is to um, get the blood pooling in your central organs away from your arms and legs. So people right. all uh, keep their bedroom cool uh, and you know, stick their arms and legs out the corners of their duvet and and whatnot, that's great. But you can help that by uh, exercising a few hours before bed. That's certainly going to help yeah. because you get blood to the periphery and it drains away again. Or even a hot bath in that period before dinner helps as well. So, oh, brilliant, yeah. cool. Yeah, so that's something nice and simple for you. So you just hop, hop in a hot bath. Uh, would a yeah. shower do the same? Or yeah, you want to get pretty hot because you want to get the the blood to the periphery. Right. The other thing. The, the, the other thing I often have trouble with, and I, a lot of my clients do, is that you know they wake up in the night because they've got big jobs and they're ruminating about this, that, and the other thing. Mm. And a lot of people get up and whatnot, but I, I, I tend not to, like do, to do that. I don't want to support the physiology of waking up and turning on yeah. lights and stuff. Um, but seriously, my advice is for you is to download some podcasts. I I, uh, mm -hmm. um, I I can guarantee you, if you download the British Medical Journal, you'll be asleep again and in less than two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. No, no doubt. No doubt. Um, how about um, sort of uh, sleep music and stuff like this? What are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, that can work if if, um, yeah. if if you want to support that uh, sort of deep, easy breathing. That can help. Yeah, a bit sort of, of whale noises and I don't know forest noises and stuff like that. that's a common thing that people. Yeah. Yeah, people do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you think that'd help at all, or do you think that's just sort of? Oh, look, I'd, if it it, 
I just go straight for conservative, boring medicine where they, they're still yeah. talking about uh, low fat diets and that sends me to sleep. In three yeah, they start reading that. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. So we've got uh, move it, feed it, defend it, and then number four. Uh, I've called do important things, and I think this is a really interesting one. And again, science has known that when you shift your attention away from one task, to do another task and then try to come back. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like you come back where you left off. You, your brain um, comes back much further. So if you want to think about, I mean, as a male, you're a male as well. I, I often get um, told by females that I'm hopeless at multitasking, um, yeah. <laughs> which is more, more or less true. Um, yeah. but I'll put it out to there to the ladies to stop hassling us because, frankly, I don't care. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's not our job. But, but, no. <laughs> But when it comes to cognitive what we do. This, this, yeah, this, this attention shifting, we're, we're, all, we're all hopeless, actually. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you know, the, the studies on that, which have been conducted now for 20 or 30 years, are pretty convincing. You know, if, if you wanted mm -hmm. to go about 50% slower and make about 50% more mistakes, then what you'd do is multitask. You, you know, you'd have your cell yeah. phone going, you'd have some chat going, you'd, you'd be in an open plan office, you'd be you know, getting interrupted all the time. That, that's exactly how you'd do it. Uh, <laughs> and that's sort of what we move towards, sort of more open plan, multitasking, yeah. and yeah. all sorts. If you, if you wanted to actually complete a task and do some work, then you'd turn all that off and you'd, you'd go by yourself somewhere and, and start a task and then actually finish it. You'd, you'd do it quicker mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and you'd make many less mistakes. And, and, and again, it's, this, is not, um, this is not close to being new science. But we have mm -hmm. business practice that's gone completely the other way in a time yeah. where we were supposed to be more productive. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Because um, one thing that sort of, in terms of my own business, and uh, I've really focused on in the past two, three years, is single handling. So you know, having one task, get that done, move on to the next one, and just yeah. sort of focusing directly on that. And you know, that's how you get shit done, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. I've, talked on, about a, uh, I've talked about a, uh, a term I got off uh, Tim Ferriss, actually, which is oh, yeah. what, you, what you end up doing is, um, is procrastinating when you come into the office, which is yeah. basically fiddling around doing emails. You know? You're putting stuff yeah. off and fiddling yeah. at the same time. Uh, yeah. Great term. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, you're, you're just going all over the shop basically. So you know, you've got a scheduled time to get specific stuff done. Um, and it comes into Parkinson's law. I don't know if you know about Parkinson's law. Um, in terms of, you know, the amount of time that you set is the amount of time that it will take. Um, yeah. in a in a nutshell, it's a bit more complicated than that. But um, yeah, <laughs> it's it's crazy. Um, so so what do you call that fourth rule? Sorry guys. Uh, do, do important things. Do important things, that was perfect. Um, so you've got the four rules there. Um, and then number five. I've called it excited. I've called it excited. Um, I guess the brain, rule, the brain rule there is that your brain hates boring stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a little bit more interesting than you think. Um, I mean, first of all, I, 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 just a bit of background on that. I, I, I was getting all the ta asked all the time to do um, workplace seminars on happiness. And I was like, oh, you know, another happiness seminar. You know, I'm going to go crazy. I've got smiley faces <laughs> up. And then I sort of started thinking about that a bit more deeply and thinking, well, what's the opposite of happiness? It's sadness. Are we trying to avoid that? Mm -hmm. Well, nah, that's part of a normal fulfilled life. And then I was like, well, yeah. what are we after? And I was like, well, it's excitement. And we're trying to avoid boredom. And then I was trying to figure out what excitement was. And I, actually, I was just like, it's stuff that you're into. Um, and, you know, that, I mean, it could be collecting stamps or s Smurfs or anything. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but... I'm a firm believer, and I've, uh, I've got three boys uh, in the sort of education system, and I see all the time the school system trying to talk about what they're not good at, what their weaknesses are. And I'm sort of going, mm. man, pick what you're good at, and it's only then yeah. can you multiply your strengths. Uh, yeah. And I, I just, I, I sort of have this, uh, I mean, we're all moving into a world that we've got no idea what it's going to be like. Um, the only thing I think you can guarantee is that there's a bunch of you're going to have to be damn good at something. I mean, if you're not damn good at something, they'll probably outsource it to um, 
Pakistan. In fact, we've got someone in Pakistan making a video for us at the moment. But yeah. um, <laughs> uh, so you better get whatever you're doing. You better get damn good at it. And the only way to get excellent at something, in my mind, is um, that you've got to be into it. Uh, mm -hmm. And actually, I was telling her, uh, it's only because I, I live near a beach, Takapuna Beach here in Auckland, and mm. there's a guy who, who was training for on his windsurfer down there for years, and I used to watch him, and it turned out he was actually um, pretty good, and it turned out he was actually very good because he won the uh, Olympic gold medal at uh, the Beijing Olympics. So not that. Right. <laughs> no, 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 but um, I, I was watching him, <laughs> you could sail a bit, but I was watching... Uh, I was watching him, they, they pulled his boat as when they win the gold medal, they carry the whole boat up, so they couldn't really get an interview with him. So they decided to talk to his mother, and they're like, oh, um, Mrs. Ashley, wh wh you must be very proud of Tom. Oh, yes, yes, we're proud of him. And then the reporter was like, well, what about all the sacrifice and the resources and everything you needed to win this medal? must have been terrible time and very hard. And she goes, oh, no, no. In my family, we have a strong philosophy that... Um, we, we follow what we're passionate about, and the resources always follow. And I, I think mm -hmm. that was just a, it's a really important message for kids, and actually anyone in a, who's working in an office job, is, mm -hmm. for goodness sake, just do what you're good at. Forget the, forget yeah. the other stuff. Uh, Absolutely. Follow your passion. Yeah. There's no chance of you getting good at something you don't, uh, you don't love. And, and I, I do a lot of, it's probably the bulk of my work with lawyers and accountants, and, you know, there's, there's a, a miserable lot out there for yeah, people that, you know, they're earning a lot of money, uh, but they started for the money, not for the passion, and that's the fundamental yeah. flaw. Yeah. yeah, serious flaw, because, um, yeah. yeah, you do, you have to do something in life that you're passionate about, and that, you know, you, you feel purposeful as well, you yeah. know, there's a purpose behind what you're doing instead of, I don't know, crunching numbers that, you know, you don't know where they're going, what they're doing, and, yeah. No, <laughs> it's, uh, and, and, and someone's probably into that. And, and Yeah, exactly, if someone's into it, it's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, good, but, but if you're not passionate about it, then it's, uh, it's, no, it's no good for your brain, right? <laughs> yeah, no, so, so that you can't do the work, you can't, you can't engage in that process, which is, you know, the main fulfillment in life, really, so. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's, the, that's fantastic, Prof. So those are my five brain rules, really. That uh, you know, they move from the pretty physical to the psychological mm -hmm. reasonably quickly. Yeah. But I think yeah, there's a good little package there for um, you know, you want to think about being the best you can be and and mm -hmm. rewiring that brain. Then you would you would naturally do all five of those things. Yeah, absolutely. And if you follow those five um, brain rules. In the in the workplace, you'll definitely be a lot healthier within yep. the workplace. Um, so just uh, just before we, we finish up, what what does your daily um, work day look like? Oh, for me? Yeah, yeah. In uh, terms of the amount of sitting that you do, the amount of standing, and and well, whatnot. Yeah, and, so well, I'll, I'll take you sort of the, through the whole day because it's it's not a bad one actually. I've, I've, well, right. It doesn't always work this way, but I, I might right. sort of wake up, have a bit of a coffee. Um, fry up some bacon and eggs or something, um, mm -hmm. and oil, hopefully, um, take the dog for a bit of a run along the beach, and then uh, cycle up to work, which is about half an hour away. And then my office, as I say, the whole team's standing. Although I, well, I'm not anti-sitting, it's just that I've no. I've invented a, an anti-ergonomic seat. So it's basically a crate, um, large <laughs> crate. So you can sit on them as long as you like, um, but you know you, you don't end up doing that because you get a sore bum, and so yeah. you stand up. So I probably um, we've measured ourselves. Probably stand. Um, probably spend about half the day sitting, half the day standing. Perfect. Um, yeah. Um, uh, if it's a good day near the end of the day, I might go for a little uh, quick hit workout. You know, just on a. Uh, as long as there's not too many kids around, I'll jump on the kids' playground. I tend to scare the kids away, otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God, the man's going yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a problem, so we sort of try to avoid that. Um, fight till the kids are gone. Um, cycle home. Uh, there we go, yeah. So, uh, so I'm trying perfect. to build, build in the low-intensity activity, both the cycling and the yeah. standing into my That's day. Um, and then just uh, take great. it from there. Yeah. 
That's great. And I, I like the uh, anti um, ergonomic um, seat. <laughs> as well, well. I, I did, as a professor of ergonomics at my university, I've sort of got an argument going, how can you be a professor of you know something that you know, you're trying to get someone in one position for the for a long time. You know, that's just a yeah. fundamentally stupid idea. So I'm going was, the whole discipline that of, it is stupid. But yeah, how my um, one of my friends has a good phrase for it. We're we're breeding executive athletes. So trying to breed them into sort of being like sitting down for as long as possible. You know, because yeah, if, yeah, if, if you're if you're going to be sitting down for say you know eight hours in a day. You've got to be a, an athlete to be able to actually do it properly. <laughs> you know? yeah, it's, it's, it's literally a, it's a marathon. It's it's a cup. It's yeah. a double. It's a comrade. It's a comrade's marathon. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That's it. That's it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I, I love that idea of um, you know changing um, the heights of where you're um, where you're working. I mean sometimes I, I have a box on the floor and I and I go into a sort of a tribal squat and yeah. type away in a tribal squat or so sort of I'll sit down for a little bit or I'll take it into the kitchen on the worktop it's a bit higher and things yeah. like that. Um, just to, just to make it more interesting as well. Yeah I and mean, there's no um, no real excuse with with modern technology, you've got a little laptop or an iPad mm -hmm. away you go. There's no yeah. you know you don't have to run around a desktop. Yeah, you can sort of walk around and things like that, I suppose, as well. Um, yeah. yeah, with the, with the I, I, iPad and whatnot. I guess the other thing across all of those brain rules, if you have to actually do some serious proper work, like um, mm. probably writing a book falls into that category. Like you've actually got a deadline, you don't get it um, finished, they're going to get really angry, um, mm -hmm. they're paying you to do it. Um, then you actually have to do all those by default because otherwise you just won't even get it done. Yet, yeah. yet many... Most half of people will go off to work each. Many of us go off to work each day, um, doing none of those things, achieving very little, and going, "Oh yeah, well, okay." Uh, so, <laughs> if you actually have to do real work, then you know it turns out the office isn't really the place to do it, uh, no. and sitting down doesn't work either. That's fascinating. It's maybe better off to be sort of secluded to to get work done. <laughs> yeah, and and the the difficulty with that, of course, is that. Most people you get into this culture in offices of when you don't, when you're not at the office, people sort of assume you're not working or something. You're down the coffee shop, yeah, and, and you could be down the coffee shop, and that might be a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. precisely. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 well, the other one there is is you know lunchtime sleeping or the odd power nap. I mean, if you, if you're curled up under your desk, um, in this country they bring the police in, uh, you know, take take you away for. Um, you know, we know it has profound effects on productivity. Mm. Yeah, because would you would you say a siesta is beneficial in the afternoon, like a power nap? Yeah, well, um, NASA did that original research in I think 1974, mm. um, yeah. and the the effects were just profound, absolutely profound. Uh, and we, you know, I don't know what they're like in the UK, but in New Zealand we tend to laugh at you know these cultures that have sleeps at lunchtime and think of them as lazy oh, yeah. and unproductive. Yeah, of course. When, um, yeah, that may be true, but it's it's uh, or, or it may not be. But <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> um, I, I, I think um, sleeping at you know, that short nap's really good. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's something that I've sort of implemented over the past few years is, is having a, a quick short nap in the afternoon, and um, so you know you you just feel a bit more able to deal with stress a lot better um, yeah. and be more productive as well. You're quite right. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. So those five rules. Uh, just to go over them again. It was. Okay, so uh, sorry. You brain go rule one. Up. Brain rule one is move it, uh, and remember the acronym Go Yeah, get off your ass. That was brain it. Rule <laughs> brain rule two is feed it, um, yeah. and we're talking about fat adaptation there. Uh, right. Run the run your brain on fat. For goodness sake. Yes. Yeah, please. <laughs> Brain rule three is defend it. So sleep is not a luxury. That's the essential part of learning and, and solving problems. Uh -huh. uh, brain rule four is do important things. So do the manly thing and single task it. You're hopeless at anything else. Yeah. Uh, and uh, brain rule five is excited. <coughs> do work to your strengths. Do the stuff that turns you on. Absolutely. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. And if you follow those five rules, then undoubtedly uh, you'll be you'll live a long and prosperous life.
I'm saying. Yeah, basically, it's guaranteed. Yeah, yeah, there you go. It's got the Professor Grant Schofield guarantee. Yeah, uh, <laughs> highlights and files. Um, let me know. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely brilliant, brilliant. Um, and where can people find out more information um, about you? So if you go to my blog, which is profgrant.com. And, Perfect. Uh, and that's yeah, the science that's, of human yeah. potential that we were talking about at the beginning. Yeah, that, that's the uh, sort of call. Great blog. Right, Great yeah. blog. Thanks. Um, and then uh, you've got a book um, out with uh, Buck. What's his name? Buck Shef Sheffield. Buck's offered uh, for the non-New Zealanders. He's a famous uh, rugby captain, but uh, ended up getting uh, leukemia and stuff. So we wrote a book mm. about uh, aimed specifically at men, actually, and. Most of it's around those five brain rules, so that's on uh, Amazon. You can get it for five bucks or something. So yeah, yeah. Buy. I think it's three three ninety nine uh, for the Kindle edition in the UK. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. if people if people go to uh, smashthefat dot com forward slash buck up, then that'll yeah. take them straight there. Oh, beautiful. Perfect. Um, and then what what else have you got coming up? In terms of your own research and. and uh, like we we're, we're really we've really got into this. Uh, High fat, um, fat adaptation, both for sort of cognitive performance. Um, right. But I mean, we struggle. We really struggle here with these healthy eating guidelines around, you know, dietary carbohydrates. Uh, we had a great conversation today with a, a, a 91 year old pathologist in Chicago called Joseph Kraft with a K. Um, and this fellow's run um, insulin. Uh, oral glucose tolerance tests measuring glucose and insulin for over five hours, which is an extended period. He did 14,000 of these in his career, um, and he's going to send us those data. It's just it just shows you um, how dietary carbohydrates upset the system. But not mm. only that, is we we've, we've got a whole lot of people that respond very poorly to dietary carbohydrates. They become what we call hyperinsulinic, um, mm -hmm. which causes damage, profound damage. From the brain through to the kidneys to the heart to the basically anywhere there's a blood vessel, yeah. uh, and yet we persist treating diabetics with low-fat, high-carbohydrate diets as if the yeah. quality of the carbohydrate will make a difference. In fact, um, we're intent on showing, I think, or well, hopefully it'll show. It, I think it will. That mm -hmm. um, that that what people would regard as high-quality carbohydrates for people who are insulin-resistant are even worse. Because they go on slowly, yeah. but they're already hyperinsulinic. So you end up with yeah. you end up with high insulin for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it's that hyperinsulinemia that causes the weight gain, that shuts the brain down, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and you know, it starts to look at these aging brains and yeah, because you know, it's, it's implicated in so many things, hyperinsulinemia. Yeah. Um, in terms yeah, so of yeah, like, from from Alzheimer's to cardiovascular disease, obviously obesity is a given. Yeah. Uh, diabetes, of course, yeah. and everything. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we, and you you bring together the, all of these metabolic issues, um, and I think dietary carbohydrates are strongly implicated, and there's just really no yeah. recognition in the mainstream medical community about that. So that's that's my main mission in the next. Wow. Well, I imagine it's going to go on for a while, but uh, yeah, at least the next decade we've got ahead of us. Um, but yeah, what, what, what's the um, what's the research going to be? Just into how it affects the brain, mostly. Uh, well, we've got a number of studies, but we'll be we'll be feeding people um, mostly people who are insulin resistant, different types of carbohydrates, um, mm -hmm. looking at insulin, looking at brain function, these mm -hmm. sorts of things. Those are uh, those are fairly simple studies to do because you can control it and they're acute feeding yeah. studies. We're also interested in um, longer term effects. Uh, got yeah. another student who's actually very interested in just um, mitigating that fat adaptation stage when you switch from a high uh, <laughs> yeah, to try and, you know, so what, what can you do? Is it just taking extra coconut oil? Is that going to do it? Or mm. other MCTs or whatever. So we're, Bunch of stuff going on there because you know there's a few barriers to getting yourself yeah, into it. Yeah, there are a few um, few things that sort of get in the way for people yeah. sometimes, yeah. and they just, they just end up giving up and then going back to you know having special cake for breakfast. You know? <laughs> it's like no, please yeah. stick with it. Be patient. Yeah. 
But it frustrates me incredibly because they, they, they stand to benefit so much, but then they do it. They say, see, told you I was going to feel like crap. And it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we want to mitigate that a little bit better and get a bit more yeah, structure. We do. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we Actually, we have got ourselves into a bit of a pickle with this whole yeah. situation from <laughs> yeah, from the, the, the crappy um, healthy eating advice to, to our workplace as well, uh, which isn't yeah. ideal. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hopefully. Um, we're we're all contributing to to putting it back on back back on the right track. Yeah, well, I think that's the the other thing about that, Sam. I think is that what's uh, changed in the world now. And I always say this when I do any sort of uh, seminar with people: is you know, don't for God's sake, don't believe anything I say. In fact, I hope you don't. Mm. Uh, yeah. But I hope at least you pr provoked enough to go and do your own research on it. And and the world's yes. changed now from. The, the, you know, all this evidence is now accessible. Um, mm -hmm. It's accessible both through Amazon, through really good books. Um, mm -hmm. You can get them instantly. Uh, um, some, you know, good bloggers. But even the actual medical databases, you can go right on there and look at PubMed and, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and I think an intelligent lay person can start to make their own judgments on that. And, and that hasn't been the case up until now at all. It was this... Uh, medicine by eminence uh, rather than evidence and it's just uh, I think that with the ground up the sort of work that you guys are doing is going to make a big difference. Yeah, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. So we've got an exciting um, sort of 10, 20 years ahead of us um, with, with all of this going on. Um, but yeah, I, I really appreciate all your work, uh, Professor Schofield, and uh, yeah, I appreciate your time today. Um, and I look forward to uh, to these most recent studies that you're doing. Um, yeah, should be should be interesting. You'll have to uh, let me know um, when you when you get the results in. Sure will. Absolutely, and we'll get you back on for uh, to to explain explain to the to the public what what it means. <laughs> okay, great. Good to talk to you. Perfect. Thanks, Professor Schofield. Take care now.